The monarch butterfly is one of the most beautiful insects on the planet and one of nature's unsolved mysteries. We're still not sure how or why millions of them make a round-trip migration from North America to a small mountain range in Mexico each year. Almost as fascinating are the physical changes each monarch goes through from birth to adult butterfly. After the female butterfly lays its eggs on a milkweed plant, it takes about three days for the caterpillar to emerge. From then on, the caterpillar thrives exclusively on otherwise toxic milkweed plants, experiencing several distinct growth phases called instars, each lasting about three days. It sheds some of its old skin between each instar phase, and after roughly two weeks, it reaches the fifth and final instar phase, shown here. The caterpillar then stops eating and moves away from the milkweed plant in search of a safe place to attach its tail using a strong silk it secretes. Then it hangs upside down in a J-shape and for most of the next day appears to do hundreds of caterpillar sit-ups. Then an amazing thing happens. Its skin splits between the two antenna and internal muscles pull its entire external skin, feet, mouth, and all, upward to the tail, just like a window shade. At that point, the green glob left behind begins wiggling frantically until the old skin falls away and then spends hours contorting into the final chrysalis shape. That process takes several hours and is sped up here using time-lapse photography. But early on, several notable and distinct patterns appear, including a line of white dots about a third of the way down and a few yellowish spots further down. By the next day, all visible movement stops and a black edge appears under the white dots, which along with the yellow dots slowly and magically turn into reflective gold and become more visible as the chrysalis turns a darker green. For the next nine to 12 days, depending on the temperature, lots of changes occur on the inside. Then the chrysalis becomes increasingly transparent on about day 13 or 14, and the monarch wing patterns become visible through the chrysalis. The E-close phase begins when the chrysalis expands just a bit above the gold line, and shortly thereafter the butterfly will burst from the chrysalis and use its hook feet to hang on to the shell. Right after it emerges, the wings are compact and the abdomen is bloated with fluid. The monarch pumps that fluid into the veins of its wings and they expand and lengthen over several hours, kind of like inflating an air mattress with liquid epoxy glue. When the wings are done expanding, the new butterfly will usually release several drops of leftover fluid, signaling that it's reached its full length, which for the healthy females shown here is just over two inches, while a male is slightly larger. The wings need time to dry before the monarch can fly, and this is a great time to coax it onto a flower for a drink of nectar. Look closely at the open wings. If there are dark spots on both lower wings where the red arrow is pointing, it's a male. If not, it's a female. From this point on, the direction the monarch flies, the behavior it exhibits, and its lifespan are all based on the time of year that it takes its first flight. From spring to late summer, most monarch butterflies continue to fly north and mate, Monarch mating is a real hookup and can last up to 14 hours. During that time, the male flies the female around from flower to flower and loses up to 15% of its body weight. Then the fertilized female sets off to lay several hundred eggs, one at a time, always on milkweed plants it finds while heading north. But by early September, all new monarchs will head south in migration and won't mate till the spring. For tips on how to attract and breed monarch butterflies, subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll also find other movies on strange animals and insect behaviors that I've seen.